dudes and dudettes, how are you guys? This is Chazzy and welcome back to Chazzy's Top 10, the segment on my channel where I can pretend that I'm Watch Mojo, you know, just doing list videos of the top 10 things of everyday life, you know. And this video is, I'm pretty sure that if you guys have been following my channel, my, my latest videos, I'm pretty sure this one was, you know, pretty obvious, you know, this one was kind of like, you know, I'm pretty sure that you guys, like this, even if you didn't expect this video, I'm sure you're not surprised that this video is coming out, you know, because I have been doing a lot of basketball related content on my channel lately, you know, like gameplays, I've been playing NBA Live 19 and talking about NBA players and things like that, you know, so today I'm going to be doing what I consider to be the top 10 best uh, basketball players of all time, okay? Now here's the thing, guys, before we get into it, just a few, uh, a few little tidbits of notes that I want to give you guys, okay? First off, I am still, even even at the time of recording this video, learning about basketball, you know, I'm still getting into it. There are a lot of things that I don't really understand, you know, I'm still trying to absorb as much of it as I can. But I do consider that my knowledge of it has come a long way, you know, ever, at least ever since my first NBA gameplay, uh, NBA Live gameplay. So these uh, 10 players are going to be, you know, uh, they, they are who I consider to be my personal top favorites, you know, the ones who I consider to be the best. So whether or not you agree or disagree, don't spread the hate, okay? These videos are always heavily opinionated. It's who I consider to be the top 10, okay? So, and this video, there was a lot of work put into this video. I did so much research. It was hours of researching watching different YouTube videos from different channels and uh, reading about Wik and Wikipedia articles and going to NBA and SBN websites to look at all the stats you know so much research went into this video so at the very least I hope you guys enjoyed you know whether or not you agree with it you know so let's just get right into it okay let's get the obvious one out of the way at the very first uh, at the very first uh, spot is Michael Jordan that he is here he yeah. is now he's blocked here but he carries it underneath with the momentum and lays it in, you saw there was three seconds on the clock. Michael Jordan is unanimously considered to be the best NBA player of all time for a number of reasons and I think that if you break down each and every single individual layer of what made Michael Jordan Michael Jordan, you can isolate that by itself and understand why he is considered to be the best, you know? Now, Michael Jordan in his entire career, he played in the uh, in the Chicago Bulls from 1984 until 1993, uh, which is when he retired for the first time, and it actually took him a while to to become the player that he was known for in the in the early 90s because he didn't win a single piece of silverware uh, he didn't win a single a championship with the Chicago Bulls in the 80s you know but then when the 90s came around and he got a few teammates you know along the names of Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman things started to change a little bit you know and then he actually ended up retiring in 93 following the death of his father where uh, up until then he had actually won a treble which is three different uh, championships in three different years one after the other so he actually won uh, the NBA championship in 1991 92 and 93 then he retired following the death of his father and he came back in 1994 and then he actually won another treble he won the NBA championship again with the Chicago Bulls in 95 uh, sorry um, 95 96 and then 97 you know and then he actually retired again in 1998 so and that was uh his second retirement up until then until he came back in 2001 to play for the washington wizards but of course he wasn't the same but anyway so Michael Jordan in his entire career amassed a total of 32,292 points, you know. I'm going to kind of analyze the point system here in this video, give you guys the points and uh, the, the titles that the, that the players want to make it a little bit easier, you know. And Jordan is actually pretty crazy because he won six NBA championships with the same team and in each one of them he was given the NBA Finals MVP, which is the most valuable player award. So it's kind of like the Balloon d'Or, you know, in um, in uh, soccer or football, you know, depending on what region you live in. But it's basically Basically, something that's only given to you in the finals, you know. So, if you were the best player in the NBA finals, then that's how you get this trophy, you know. And Jordan was really crazy with what he did, man. I recorded another video some time ago talking about just him. You guys can go watch that later, too. But he had such a fluidity, you know. He played basketball with such grace and finesse, you know. And it was really weird because he would do things that would normally seem very hard, you know. Me, for example, I probably couldn't score a three pointer to save my life, you know. But he made them look easy, even though he did have a very low, um, Three, uh, three point percentage range he still actually was really good with his jump shots you know when he would like he would jump up and it would seem like he would almost levitate you know he would stay up in the air longer than anyone else and then let the ball go and it would fly perfectly into the net it would just drop right into the net you know it was really crazy the kind of stuff that Michael Jordan did and the ways that he would motivate himself to get better and better even though even if it was like just his coach you know 
talking, uh, you know, appraising another player on the opposing team, he would take that personally. Then he would go into the court and completely demolish the other team. Now, the thing with Jordan is that he could play by himself, obviously, but he was also a team player. You know, it depends on you know how you think and what what. Uh, time he would play in but anyway I think that Jordan uh, because of his pros in the Chicago Bulls and what he did with the American Dream Team you know he won also some Olympic gold medals he is easily the best of all time you really can't you really just can't deny this you know I have not seen a single list video on YouTube or anywhere else talking about the greatest NBA players where Michael Jordan was not number one I dare somebody to do this kind of thing you know so to me Jordan is and always will be the best his royal airness and I think that like you could really like look at the Chicago Bulls they have never won anything without Jordan you know like they have only won six NBA championships and it was because of Jordan so just goes to show you just how much of an effect this guy had you know but yeah to me the number one spot is MJ Next, we have a player who played quite a few years before MJ even got started in the game, Bill Russell. That was fouled. Wiley was guarding Russell, but to no avail, as big Bill Russell now has... Russell makes it. Bill Russell played the entirety of his career in the Boston Celtics from 1956 to 1969 and from there he really made a name for himself in the basketball world because back in the day guys basketball was a very different sport. Remember that basketball, the, uh, the NBA, the National Basketball Association was created in 1945 you know around the, the mid 1940s there but I'm pretty sure it was 45. So like when Bill Russell started playing we had just a little bit of a decade after the NBA was actually created so the game was much different back then you know it was a lot slower it was was less dynamic but still whoever had a good jump shot and a good free throw percentage range and could actually dribble past defenders was actually already considered to be a decent player you know and Bill Russell had a very amazing talent and even though he finished his entire career with 14,522 points he still is considered widely to be one of the greatest ever because of his prowess on the court you know and the influence that he had and the way that he played you know and he had a really good playmaking vision he could be a really good team player but if you gave the ball to him you know he could could definitely resolve things by himself you know and it's very it's very nice to see footage of him on YouTube of how he played because so you can see just how good this guy really was you know and throughout his entire career he actually won a staggering 11 NBA championships and five MVP awards so I mean the guy was pretty good I actually think that he is the player with the most NBA championships on this list you know so almost double um, what Michael won so it's uh, it's pretty crazy, you know, and uh, he's also uh, what we consider a one one club man or one team man. You know, he played his entire career for one uh, one team, which was the Celtics. You know, who later on we would get even more decent players. I'm going to talk about another one a little bit down the line. But I think Bill Russell definitely deserves a spot here. You know, he actually played some time with uh, Will Chamberlain, who's another player who's really phenomenal. And um, I think that it was very like I think the reason I would I would go on to say that the reason Will Chamberlain didn't have more NBA championships was because of Bill Russell because he was just an effective guard you know I don't know the positions these players played and I think I was going to be too hard to put into the list so I just left it there you guys can go research it by himself I don't know what Bill what position Bill Russell played and if he was a point guard or anything like that but anyway so Bill Russell coming in at number two and next we have somebody who I literally just mentioned Will Chamberlain and what people couldn't understand is he could put the ball in a basket with three guys hanging off his arms, some guy biting him on his shin, and uh, now you take everybody away and it's like the basket is moving. Okay, for this one here, guys, I'm going to have to refer to my cheat sheet that I have here, okay, on my phone. I actually took the time to write down a lot of different notes here on, uh, on my word pad so I can act because uh, Will Chamberlain played for a lot of different teams. His career started in 1958 and ended in 1973, and he played for the Harlem Globetrotters, the San Francisco Warriors, the Philadelphia 76ers, and then later the Los Angeles Lakers. And then, uh, okay, I'm just going to put it down here because I, I could not memorize all of that. But anyway, so Will Chamberlain was a beast. Now, let's get the obvious thing out of the way this guy was freakishly big this guy was really tall he was seven foot one and he had a really long a uh, wingspan so his arms when they were outstretched they were they made him look like a freaking praying mantis you know this guy was really really freaking tall so as you can imagine he had very very he didn't really have a hard time dunking the ball you know or putting it where he wanted it to you know like uh, doing his three-pointer so Will Chamberlain was actually very good at what he didn't he was really he was actually very hard to uh 
he was actually very hard to mark, you know, to guard. And there were there were a series of different rules implemented around him, so the other team, the other players and uh, rival teams could actually try to stop him. But it was really hard. We're talking about a guy who's like 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 the guy's head goes above my living room ceiling, man. This guy is really really freaking tall, but was unfortunately he died. But w during his time, I do believe that uh, out of all the teams that I mentioned here, he probably played the best for the 76ers or maybe even the Lakers themselves or maybe the Globe Trotters, I don't know. I do think he hit his peak around the, the middle of, uh, of his career there. And Chamberlain was a beast. And to this day, it, uh, he actually finished his career with 31,419 points in total. So a little bit under Michael Jordan, you know. But the thing with Will Chamberlain is that he is to this day the only player in the history of the NBA to score. 100 points in a single game yes he scored 100 points not the team he himself individually scored 100 points i don't I, i'm i don't even know who came close you know was it kobe with his 60 points no i'm pretty sure somebody uh no kobe once scored 81 points in a game so but anyway i do think that nobody is ever going to you know hit this record man i mean 100 points in one game for one player is pretty crazy so to me and uh because of his impassable you know um his skill you know the way that he put himself out there and made himself pretty much unguardable and his extreme height and the way that he could just get right through people he's like he this guy was tall so imagine you like running from from one side of the court to the other in two dribbles that's like you know like when you when you dribble the ball you bounce it on the court and it comes back to your hand Wilt could probably traverse the court in two different dribbles so he would dribble the ball once and then twice but then because of that he would take like maybe what what maybe four or five steps or so and he would already be at the other side of the court so this guy was really freakishly tall and to me he deserved the number three spot on this list all right next we have a player who i do believe is actually very underrated and who i personally know very little about george micken the giant could move with the speed of a lightweight when he had to he knew all the tricks and when it came to scoring points, he was in a class by himself. Despite his great size, six feet, ten inches, he's a natural athlete. George Bacon was a player who was active in the 40s, so he was he's actually the oldest player on this list here, but I'm not exactly putting this in a, in a very faithful chronological order, but I am putting the older guys first. He actually played in, uh, in from 1946 to 47 in the Chicago American Gears, a very old team that I don't think still exists today. And then later he went, I have the cheat sheet down here, guys, okay, in case you watch, you see me looking down. He actually played in uh, from 47 to 54 in the Minneapolis Lakers, not the Los Angeles Lakers. And then he played, he retired. I guess maybe he stopped for some reason, maybe retired and came back in 1956. In his entire career, he amassed 21,920 points. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated. You know, before I talk about him as a player, I'm gonna highlight his statistics and they are a little bit complicated. I actually put here that he won a total of seven NBA and NBL championships. NBL was the National Basketball League back in the day. So it's the same competition, but it had a different name, but then later they reformatted it. So like it would, it's very strange because like, it, it actually says that he won five of one of these championships and then two of the other, like they're two different ones, but it's kind of like the, the English Premier League, which later became the Barclays Premier League, you know, but it's pretty much the same thing, but it was reformatted, but I just gave him uh, seven championship titles in total in his career with one MVP, okay? Now, the thing with George McCann is that he was just as tall as Will Chamberlain, you know, he was about 7'1", seven, 7'2". Seven, this guy was so tall that he had this signature move, which was this, like, uh, this hook shot, right, where he would just jump over a, over a defender and just do this he would just shoot the ball and it would hook perfectly into the net every time you know it was impossible to guard this guy such was his influence in the sport that there were a, a series of different rules implemented to make it uh, a little easier to guard the guy so imagine you being so good that the sport that you played creates rules to make it harder for you to play you know included but not limited to changing the court size they made the court a, a few a, a little bit bigger you know they made the, the 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 half court inside a little bit bigger too the space and they made the rules so you couldn't you have to uh hold the ball for only three seconds before releasing it so shooting and passing it to a teammate you know and making the space a little bit bigger so like and this did make him a little bit easier to guard but and his points did go down throughout his career towards the end there but it, he was still a very effective player and it didn't stop him from doing his shots and winning titles you know so 
Like they implemented size changes to the court to accommodate this guy, man. And there was also this thing called the McCann drill, which was named after him, which is a way for you to train uh, your teammates, uh, to train your team in a way that would make you play sort of like George McCann, you know? And this guy, very similar to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, actually, he had this really, he had these really long gangly arms, which made it very easy for him to dunk the ball, you know? So it was really hard for you to stop this dude. It was really, really hard for you to stop this guy. And uh, it's a very little short segment here because I don't know too much about him, but I still think he deserves this mention here on this list. And next we have somebody who I just mentioned momentarily ago in, uh, in the last segment, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This guy. The guy with the most unstoppable move in the history of the NBA. Now, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was a very interesting figure because when he wasn't getting his butt whooped by Bruce Lee in the game of death, he was actually a professional basketball player and he played his entire career from uh, 16, for a 20-year career from 69 to 89. From 1969 until 1975, he played for the Milwaukee Bucks, you know, and he was actually a very decent player there. He really made a name for himself in the NBA, you know, through his pros there, his performances. But I do believe that he became even more versatile in the Los Angeles Lakers that where he, where, ah, Blah, my tongue, where he played from 1975 to 1989, you know, and there he actually formed kind of like a dynasty of sorts with uh, Magic Johnson at some point. But then again, like I think that in the Milwaukee Bucks, he was kind of his own player, you know. I don't think there was anyone else in that team that was anywhere close to his level. So when he came to the Lakers, of course, he started to deteriorate a little bit. But in the Milwaukee Bucks, I would say that's where he played his prime. That's just my opinion. And Kareem actually amassed a total of 21,791 points in his entire career, which I think is very impressive. Now, the thing with Kareem is that he was really tall. This guy, to this day, he's pretty damn tall. I think he's also a player who got up to the seven foot rain seven foot one you know so very similar to George Mike and he had really long arms so he looked like a freaking doll man, you know like one of those stretchy dolls that you would uh, make their arms and legs a lot longer you know so then he could he had a very very simplistic way of playing the game you know he had his own formula and he could jump pretty high and dunk the ball very easily we're talking about a guy who's probably just as tall as the rim you know so when he jumped to his full height and stretched out his arm I'm pretty sure he would have to bring his arm down to dunk you know like he would actually be over the rim it's actually very, very scary, you know? Now, you might argue that some shorter, more modern day NBA players could jump just as high, but when you're talking about a guy as tall as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, it's pretty crazy for you to even consider somebody else in the, in the same manner, you know? Now, the thing with him is that he won, I have here my little cheat sheet, he won a total of six NBA championships, and uh, in, uh, inside of these, he won two uh, NBA Final MVP awards, so he was one of the best player in the final twice, and uh, even though he had, had hit, Funny little detail that I just uh, noticed. He has the same number of, of uh, titles as Michael Jordan, same number of championships. But of course, Michael Jordan had much more of an influence in the sport than Kareem did. But I still think that uh, that Jabbar earns a spot on this list, you know. Uh, and like I said before, he did participate in the Game of Death and Bruce Lee's final movie. He, and he was actually hired because he was so tall. If you watch this movie, you see how big this guy was, you know. So it was really, really nice, you know, to see the influence that that uh, gave that uh, led him to even work in Hollywood movies, you know. So I think that was really cool too. So Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Wait, 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 before I go, there was actually one thing that I, for that I forgot to say. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was actually known for his legendary sky hook, you know? It's pretty much similar to George Mickey, you know, where he would take the ball and he would hook it into the net, you know? But this guy did it in such a way that it was impossible to defend, you know? It was called the sky hook because the guy would literally fly. It looked like he was flying through the air and boom, dunk the ball right into the net or do a little layup, you know, and uh, toss it right into the rim. So, yeah, I just want before I before I move on to the next one, I really want wanted to uh, mention that there. Alright, next we have yet another white guy. There are a lot of players on this list who are, you know, distinctively African American, very few white men. It's not a problem or anything, it's just a small observation. Larry Bird. Larry Bird was right there with Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson in mental toughness and leadership. And Bird the fall away is... Great touch. 
Larry then. All right, I gotta be honest here before I even get into it. I don't know too much about Larry Bird. Throughout my research, he was the player who was the hardest for me to come up with something concrete to say about. However, I do know that he played in the Boston Celtics for the entirety of his career from 1979 to 1992, uh, the year that I was born. That's when he retired. Uh, he later became a head coach. You know, he also played with Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson in the Dream Team, you know, in the 90s. So the thing with Johnson is that, uh, sorry, the thing with, um, the thing with Larry Bird is that he had a very versatile style of playing, you know, and he was really good at three shoot uh, three pointers. You know, he was really good at long range shooting. He actually had a very good. Um, he had a very good eye for the rim, you know, he was really good at two and three pointers, you know, and layups and post-ups, all of these things, but he was actually phenomenally good from long range. I, th I think that the people, when, when you think of Larry Bird, you associate him heavily with three pointers, you know, and uh, I think that's one of the things that made him really stand out in the NBA back in the 90s and eight, uh, back in, the, in the, the 80s and early 90s. And um, the thing with Larry Bird is that he finished off his career with um, 21,791 uh, points and st uh, statistically bleh. Statistically speaking, uh, he had three NBA uh, three NBA championships and two MVPs across all of these. So it's not a very good number of titles. But then again, it's not only titles that define how a player is good or not, you know. So I think that because of his um, influence and what he did in the game and how he kind of gave he gave a name for himself, you know, he turned the the, the name Bird into something popular. You know, I think that even the Twitter icon was was based on him or something. I was inspired by his, his name or something of the sort. Larry Bird. To me will go down in history as one of the best simply because of his pros and his influence you know and I really wish I could say more about him but for some reason he just came up short in my research you know I looked into a lot of the other players you know but he just I don't know I couldn't find anything too noteworthy to say here you know anything that he may have caused an influence like how for example uh, George McCann caused an actual you know change in the game and the rules and regulations you know but still if you're a big fan of Larry Bird feel free to, to drop a comment or two you know telling me what you think about him and how what I could have said more about him here you know but despite not knowing too much about him I obviously know how how influential he was in the game so of course he deserves a spot on this list Next, we have a bona fide magician and a guy who could really pull off some magic tricks throughout his time in the court, you know? Magic Johnson. You could put magic at any position, as we saw when he was a rookie, and he's jumped center in the NBA Finals game six without Kareem Abdul Jabbar and scored 42 points. Grab in the face back, go in the air, never looked and whipped it over his shoulder. Magic Johnson was a really good player, but he was also a little controversial at times. For example, how he retired in 96 because of his uh, 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 supposed uh, contraction of HIV. I have a little cheat sheet here that I wrote down myself. He played from 79 to 91 in the Los Angeles Lakers, and then in 96 he retired. But then he came out of retirement again in 1990. Um, no, wait, no, sorry. Um, he played until 91 in the Lakers then he retired because of the HIV then he came back in 1996 and apparently retired again and then he came back in 1999 until 2000 playing for the Magic M7 Boris and then later the Magic Great Dane also in 2000 he finished off his career with 17,707 points in total not a lot of points but I guess maybe it was the position that he played in or something that didn't really uh that didn't really, I don't know, call for a lot of points or anything of the sort. But anyway, so the thing with Johnson is that he has sort of like a little situation with Michael Jordan. If you guys happen to watch The Last Dance on Netflix, a documentary on Jordan and the Bulls, you, you would have caught this moment where during the Dream Team practice, Johnson kind of provoked Jordan. He said, look, you got to turn into Air Jordan or we're going to, you know, air you out or something like that. We're going to blow you out. And then because of this little, provo uh, pro this little provoking moment, you know, Jordan went berserk and freaking mopped the floor with the guy, you know, and uh, something that Johnson himself later retaliates by saying wow why did I say that for and Johnson played in the Lakers with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar after he came into the he came to that team later on in the 90s so um it says uh, he actually won uh, five NBA championships and three MVPs across all of those. And the thing with Johnson is that there was actually a moment during the Lakers, his spell at the Lakers, where the team was facing a lot of turmoil. They were in a pretty bad position in the, the league, I believe. And then he just came out of nowhere and said, never fear, EJ is here. You know, so then after saying this, he went on to play really well, score a ton of points in the game, get a lot of rebounds, and then actually make the team not only win the game, but maybe even a championship in the process. Something happened in that game that made the Lakers advance considerably, and that's how he managed to 
rescue his teammates from a bad situation they were in. So, you know, I think he really deserves his name, uh, Magic Johnson. Kind of funny because I always associated his name with him having played in Orlando Magic and he never did. He only, pretty much only played for the Lakers, but damn. Magic Johnson, man, it's all good. Next, we have yet another Lakers-born fellow, played his entire career in the Lakers, and one of my personal favorite players of all time, the great and the legendary, the very dearly missed Kobe Bryant. Bryant working on Morris, little one-on-one, -on -one. Kobe, pull up, fall away, yes sir! Kobe Bryant drills it home, and Kobe Bryant, what a nice half for him, he's got 14 points. More importantly, he has his... What's there to say about Kobe, huh? What is there to say about the Mamba? He played from 1996 until 2016, his entire career, like I just said, in the Los Angeles Lakers. He, I don't think he even, even flirted with the idea of ever playing a different team, you know? Now, the thing with Kobe is that he actually made a very interesting duel with Shaq, you know, Shaquille O'Neal in the Lakers. Shaq was a very complicated player. He played for a lot of different teams, but during the time he was in the Lakers, he and Kobe didn't really get along too well. At first, they did. There was like a, a brotherly dynamic, but then they started to really get at odds, you know? They actually physically fought sometimes, and uh, later, apparently, they, they started getting a little better only after they retired, you know? But the thing with Kobe, is that stop calling me whoever you are I don't want to answer your call right now the thing with Kobe is that this guy was considered to be the embodiment of Michael Jordan like the the reincarnation of Jordan you know because they played so similarly to each other their playing styles and their their playmaking abilities even though Kobe for the majority of his career he was considered to be a very selfish one-man show you know because he wouldn't pass the ball he would score a lot of points and he was really good at playing basketball but it's not an individual game it's a team game and he was heavily criticized in the early days of his career because he simply would not pass the ball to anyone, especially Shaq, who got really pissed because of that. Now, the thing with Kobe is that he had a very interesting way of, like, eventually, at, as time went by, he started to become a, a more, you know, he started opening up more and actually treating his teammates with respect. You know, he was very competitive. He would isolate himself for hours at a time, practicing, trying to get better and better. And at the very end of his career, he actually finished with more points than Michael Jordan. He actually finished off with... 33,643 points, you know, and it, like that the points really don't matter in this game, you know, like uh, I still think that Kobe Bryant was better than Kareem, for example, in certain ways, even though Kareem finished with almost 40,000 points. But I, the reason I'm trying to do this in a way that the, the more modern day players are coming later. So, but Kobe to me is amazing, man. And, I, and obviously I was going to put him on this list, even if he hadn't tragically died last year. Unfortunately, uh, he died in a helicopter crash along with his 13 year old daughter, who was also an up and coming NBA player. So we definitely lost a very promising athlete that day too. And he actually, when he retired in 2016, it was actually pretty crazy because his very last, in his very last game against the Utah Jazz, he scored. 60 points to score 60 points in your last game you know like at, like is you're about to retire so you're already past your prime at that point but he went out with a bang dude you know he really went out with a bang you know not even Michael Jordan went out the same way he did you know but then again Kobe was Kobe, you know, he actually, uh, he, uh, I think that the best game of his career he actually played, he scored a total of 80 or 81 points, you know, in one game by himself. Not too far from Will Chamberlain's record, huh, from 100 points in one game. Came pretty damn close, but 60 points in his final game is going to be remembered much more because it was his last game, you know, I mean, that's kind of one way to end, the best way to end your career, you know, standing ovations from everyone and all that, you know, very heartfelt messages. And he, uh, throughout his career, he won a total of five NBA championships and was elected the NBA Finals MVP twice, you know. I honestly think he deserved it a lot more, but then again, I didn't really follow his career. I don't really know how he played, so maybe he didn't, maybe it's already justified, but he came pretty close to Michael Jordan, huh? If only he won just one title, he would have uh, equaled Jordan's number of rings. But yeah, man. Kobe Bryant, wherever you are today, rest in peace, man. You and your legendary three-pointers. Like, I was good at making three-pointers, man. And next we have the very player who I just mentioned who played with Kobe Bryant in the Lakers, the gigantic Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, 
Okay, for this one, I'm gonna have to read here for you guys my little cheat sheet here that I have because I could not memorize this. Shaq played from 1992 until 2011, the entirety of his career, but he played for the Orlando Magic, the Los Angeles Lakers, the Miami Heat, the Phoenix Suns, the Cleveland Cavaliers, and the Boston Celtics. This guy could not decide on a damn team to represent, man. He had played in way too many teams, and I do believe that his most famed, uh, um, the, uh, I guess the most, the, looked upon the time of his career was when he played in the Lakers because he played with Kobe, you know, and they did form a pretty interesting tag team, even though they didn't really get along on and off the court, you know, but it's very, it's one of those things where you take two players who are really good and they somehow don't perform the way they should, you know, and Shaq was a freaking monster. This guy was really, really big, man. This guy had a lot of uh, statistics in his career, but I think the most intriguing one is the 19 broken ribs. Yes, the 19 times he jumped up to dunk the ball, but he did it with such physical force that he broke the entire basketball rim. The rim came down and everything behind it just crashed to the floor, man. It was because of Shaq that the NBA had to implement these new, uh, almost like steel enforced rims that were much harder to break, you know? It's because of him, because they needed to make the guy stop breaking their damn rims, you know? This guy was a monster. And the thing with him is that he really wasn't afraid. This guy was huge. He was like seven foot something and he weighed like three, 400 pounds. He was like the size of a tractor, you know? And somehow, despite so much body mass, he was fast. This dude was fast. He was agile. There was nobody who could stop the guy. And if you tried to stop Shaq, you clearly had a death wish because the guy was a wardrobe, you know? There were people who were actually saying, like people who played against him and opposing teams, you know, and tried to guard the guy. They actually said later that trying to guard Shaquille O'Neal is like trying to, is like having a wardrobe fall on top of you and you trying to stop it, you know? You're not gonna be able to. It's gonna fall on you and crush you, you know? So. It, it was pretty it was pretty much impossible for you to take this guy down you know i can imagine a lukaku who plays in a, i think the premier league or maybe he went to italy he's a footballer or a soccer player who's so big that if you try to foul him you you're the one who gets fouled you know i think it might have been the same thing with shaq you tried to foul this guy but you would hit him and fall over you know like the guy like it, it, he was unshakable you know and he ended his career with 28,520 uh sorry 28,596 points in total, you know, and he actually won four NBA championships and out of those four, he was elected uh, the MVP three times in the finals. So, you know, even a bit more of a better performance than Kobe, you know. I do believe at least a few of those titles were with the Los Angeles Lakers with Kobe, you know, uh, maybe one or two, but anyway. So Shaq to me is pretty impressive. I've always heard of him. I actually saw him in the movie Kazam, or is it Shazam? I don't know, it depends on what how the Mandela effect affected you or me, you know, but I, I, I remember this being Kazam, you know, he, he, he played a genie in a bottle, you know, he was really big fella, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, there was a really unpopular game called Shaq Fu, where it was Shaq trying to fight Kung Fu in his basketball uniform and trying to take people down, I don't know, it sucks, man. I don't even know what's worse, that or Space Jam, the Michael Jordan dude. Even though Space Jam was actually pretty entertaining, I should have mentioned Space Jam way back when I talked about Jordan. Oh, well, too late now. <laughs> but anyway, Shaq. And now last, but of course, and most certainly not least, the one player on this list who is still active today, LeBron James. I'm going to have to begin to make plays and not try to overdo it. James drives, gets inside, and finishes once again. Well, again, just put him in high pick and roll. Tristan Thompson, a very good screener. He gets a running now, this might be somewhat of a controversial choice. I don't think a lot of people are going to agree with me putting a player who is still active in a list of all the greatest of all times, you know? But then again, let me just remind you that LeBron James is a monster. He's a beast. He's 36 years old. He still hasn't finished his career, and he already has more points than Michael Jordan, you know? I, I, I guess I can, uh, I can kind of attest to the whole points not really mean anything in the long run, but this guy, he's, go, he's, go, he's going places. He's really going places, you know? And I think that it's impossible to mention any list of the best basketball players without talking about LeBron, you know? Now, he has a very interesting... Uh a very interesting career here. I'm gonna read for you guys because I couldn't memorize this. He started playing in 2003, you know, his career in the Cleveland Cavaliers, and he played there until 2010. Then he left uh, to go play in the Miami Heat where he stayed until 2014. However, he went back to the Heat in 2014 and played there until 2018, but things weren't really very, the, 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 the things, like how can I explain? 
people weren't exactly happy with him because he changed the Cavaliers, he switched teams to go to their rivals, the Heat, you know, and the way that he left wasn't really appreciated, nobody really liked it, and uh, he would, I guess he would maybe talk smack in interviews about the Cavaliers and things like that, you know, so it, he wasn't, his return in 2014 wasn't really well received from what I know, you know, and in the NBA, guys, switching teams is a very big deal. People see this as the ultimate betrayal, you know, especially when you go to, the, to their heated rivals, like maybe if, uh, like if you play in the Chicago Bulls and you go play for the, the Pistons or something, you know, or you, you're in the Los Angeles Lakers and you play for the Celtics or maybe the Clippers who are from the same city, you know, there's all this whole rivalry thing. So he didn't really perform too well, at least in comparison, you know, when he came back to the Cavaliers because of the pressure on him, you know, and he's actually a surprisingly hated player in the NBA, you know. And he has a lot of money he invested to keep his body up. He's also donated, he, he invests money. I think he spends about a million dollars a year to stay in shape, you know. And then he also, um, he, he donates a lot of this money to charities and organable f uh, foundations, you know. So he, he seems to be a very good guy, but he's also very hated in the sport because of him just being a douche, you know. And not really caring about, like, doesn't really seem like he cares about what the fans feel, you know, but you can't deny that he has a lot of skill. And then from 2018 onward to this day, he has been playing for the Los Angeles Lakers. They actually won the NBA championship very recently. And LeBron was, of course, at, at, the, at the very height of that, you know, he was the cornerstone for them winning that title. And I actually played as him in NBA Live 19, the very first gameplay that I did in that playlist. Now, the thing with LeBron is that at the time, at, at, at currently, at the time of me recording this video right now, he is sitting on 35,171 points, you know, in his career. So I'm pretty sure that if he plays until he's 40, maybe, you know, or 40-ish, he could probably definitely get to 40,000, you know. Now, the, the thing is that I don't know who the, the highest scoring NBA player is. I'm going to look into that later. But I'm pretty sure LeBron might at, might at least be close. I think he's actually in the top three or four. He's the third or fourth highest scorer. Of, uh, of all time in the NBA, you know? But anyway, um, so right now he is sitting on four NBA championships, four different rings, and four MVP awards. So translating, he has won the NBA championship four times, and in each one of these four times, he was elected the, the, the finals MVP. So it's pretty balanced. It's pretty balanced so far. You know, four championships and four MVP titles. So it's pretty cool, you know, it's pretty cool. And he still has a lot of room to grow. And he's a very powerful player, man. He does these really crazy dunks and gets a lot of air time, you know, and he's really amazing when it comes to blocking. The guy could run from half court to the other side and uh, the guy the guy from their team is gonna jump up to dunk the ball and LeBron comes and smacks it right out of his hand. You know, it's freaking crazy. And uh, he, I've seen a lot, a lot of plays of, of his like this and it doesn't even seem normal it seems completely superhuman you know but anyway so and now uh, a little uh, tidbit of info here for you guys that i wrote down because i thought was really interesting lebron james is the only player uh to uh, the only player in nba history to this day to amass 25 points in one game for 16 consecutive no sorry i knew i should have read it. i was gonna butcher it He's the only player to average 25 points per game for 16 consecutive NBA seasons, which means that for 16 straight seasons across his entire career, he has scored no less than 25 points, which is insane. So in four games, the guy scores 100 points, you know? Of course, it's not as impressive as Will Chamberlain who scored 100 in just one game, you know? But still, this is a very intense uh, percentage, you know? It's a lot of different uh, points, you know? And a lot of them come from three-pointers. He's really good at shooting from three-point range. And I think that LeBron, because he is considered to be the complete package in today's NBA, um, you know, in today's game, I think that he deserves a spot here on this list, even though it's the last one. So, and I, I actually put him last simply because he's still playing. All the other guys before him are retired. So that's kind of how, how I wanted to uh, pace this. King James. Okay, guys, so before I go, I have just one honorable mention to talk about here in the video, Stephen Curry. I know, I know, a lot of you might disagree because Stephen Curry is still very relatively young compared to everyone else. You know, he's a, he's still, he, he, he's not exactly an up and coming rookie. He's made a name for himself, but he still has a long way to go to climb to the top. But I do still think that he deserves a mention here because he has a few impressive statistics as well. He played from 2000, uh, he, he played from 2009 to the present day in the Golden State Warriors. That is the only club he's ever played in. And the thing with him is that at the time of recording this video, he currently has 17,458 points so a little far from LeBron James who's still playing today in the Lakers uh, he has three NBA championships to his name and two MVPs but the thing with Curry is that he is an insane three-point shooter this guy has so much precision and accuracy from three-pointers that it's crazy 
Yeah, it's crazy. He actually released recently a master class, you know, that you can uh, watch and learn how he shoots, you know, and obviously I'm not gonna watch it because it's not gonna be useful for me, but the thing with Kobe Bryant, uh, sorry, the thing with uh, Stephen Curry is that there's one little piece of fact that I wanna share with you guys that I think is really interesting. In just two seasons, two seasons, Stephen Curry has scored more three-pointers than Larry Bird in his entire career. That is crazy. And Larry Bird, like I said earlier, was considered to be a very, very, you know, a, a crucial figure in the three-point uh, three section. You know, he was very good from long range, very good at three-pointers, you know. And in, in his entire career, he amassed a specific number of three-point shots. And Curry, you know, uh, surpassed that in just two seasons, man. And the kid is like, he's 32. So... To me, it's pretty impressive. I honestly think it's pretty impressive. So he deserves an honorable mention here because I'm pretty sure that once he retires, where, where, whenever that is, he's definitely going to be uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame and be considered one of the best players of all time. But anyway, that's it, guys. That has been my list. You know, I really hope you enjoyed it. And it was a, uh, it took a long time to record this. It was a lot of work, but I still enjoyed it a lot. I really like making my list videos. Here on my channel, my list videos are the ones that take the most amount of work because of the time, the effort to record, and then I, I put in a lot of different clips, you know, in the text, and I have to research some of the topics. So it takes a lot of work. So it really means a lot to me when you guys like and subscribe and comment, you know, give your opinions. And it's such it's so satisfactory when I see the finished product up on my channel. And I hope you guys like this one, you know? Very outdated because I probably, uh, I, I like if I, if I try to do this in a few months, in a few months from now, where I have even more knowledge of NBA, might even be better. But you know, uh, go away. I hate these motorcycle guys so badly, man. I really wish I could just freaking do what Shaq did and just dunk them and kill the freaking bastards. But anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you agree with this list, be sure to drop a like. If you disagree, well, you can dislike it if you want, and then give me a drop a comment or two explaining why you disagree, so we can have a little discussion. Okay, it's gonna be nice too. And I really hope you guys like it. This is my final. NBA related video for a while, you know, I won't be doing any of them because I'm going to get into different things, so, you know, but later on down the road, I will come back for a different reason. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is Chazzy signing out for now, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.